May the Lord be with you. What a wonderful sound. We welcome you to worship at Oxford Presbyterian Church as we mark with these gracious words this as a sacred time, somehow set apart from the rest of the week. The psalm for today proclaims these familiar words that you may be able to say along with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. I'll let you finish that Psalm 23 throughout today. For gathered in this sanctuary, we do feel, we feel the fellowship and the comfort of being shepherded along this wonderful journey together of faith. And we are so glad that you have come to join us for this time of worship. We gather to pause, to be filled up again for the week ahead of mission and ministry, and we gather to praise. So if you are visiting, a very special welcome to you today. We're so glad you're here. We'd love for you as you may leave um, from the door to the lounge or the door out to Church Street to take with you one of these visitor packets, these welcome packets, so that we can share with you a little bit more about the mission and ministry of Oxford Presbyterian Church. We also have another way that we'd love to get to know one another by name because God loves our names and so we we love one another's names as well. So take these blue friendship pads and pass those down the pews and then pass them back during the offering so that we might be able to capture as many names and you might be able to greet one another by name. On this Earth Sunday, you'll notice a little something different about our call to worship. On the call to worship in parentheses, you'll see it says, we name local spring flowers and budding trees. Now, we have a few microphones in the congregation that, Robert, I'm going to ask you to turn those on for our call to worship. So I've asked a few people to be ready to name flowers and and trees and in bloom. But I'd also like to ask you to just name those aloud. I love the daffodils behind me this morning on the communion table and the sunshine that they bring in. So just feel free in our call to worship. We'll pause at that moment just to name the flowers and the budding trees. And then later, we'll have a moment to name the local rivers and bodies of water as well. So just feel free. Raise your voices and and give thanks for, for the creation that God has given us to sustain our life in all of its abundance. Continuing with announcements, it's after worship that one of our choir members, Ashley Boyle, who is waving to us, she is um, going to be walking the Camino on pilgrimage this summer and would like to share a little bit about that journey with our congregation. So she'll be in the lounge with a few images and um, ready to answer questions. She's inviting the congregation to help sponsor her journey. Um, There's more information in the bulletin. One thing that's not in the bulletin is about how you might contribute. Just use a pew envelope and you can put um, just for Ashley and we'll make sure that any contribution, check or cash, will get get to Ashley for that um, summer uh, pilgrimage. You'll also note that we have an exciting opportunity as our church begins renovation at the seminary church facility. While that facility goes offline for a few months, we are going to be going online with a history project for that facility. It's exciting. I look, ask you to read that in the bulletin and consider how um, you might be part of that. And finally, we come to a moment for mission today. On behalf of our peacemaking committee, Carla Blackmar Rice um, has a moment for mission um, that is an opportunity for us to be active and to care for God's creation right after worship. Carl. Hello, good morning everybody and happy Earth Day. I'm so happy to be in front of you today. Um, My name is Carla Blackmar Rice and I only moved to Oxford back in August of last year. And I love this community. I've really enjoyed worshiping with this church, I think since September of last year. And it's been a real bright point for me in my relocation here. Um, As I've been going around on Oxford on foot and on bicycle, I don't have a car because I feel strongly that we have a moral imperative to reduce our fossil fuel use and our greenhouse gas emissions. So as I travel around Oxford on foot and by bicycle, I've noticed that Oxford has a similar problem to one I've seen in other places I've lived, which is a lot of waste and plastic pollution 
that is alongside our roadways and in our alleys. And one of the things I love about this congregation is that people seem so engaged with the idea of creation care, of earth care, and many specific members of this congregation have talked to me about how strongly they feel about picking up waste and garbage and making sure that this stuff isn't getting into our aquifers, into our water. Um, so I thought about this and I thought, how can we grow this movement, really make sure that everybody's doing their part to not contribute to the problem of plastic waste and pollution that we see in our streets? Um, and so I started a small Facebook group called Take Three Oxford. If you're on Facebook, you can look it up. It's hashtag Take Three Oxford. And it's a very simple idea, which is that whenever you go out, or if you're out and about during your day walking your dog, that you pick up three pieces of garbage and put them in a trash can where they won't blow out again, put them in a safe location in your trash so that they won't be contaminating our waterways. And I picked three because it's very, very simple. Um, I have to get places too, so I can't be picking up garbage my whole way. And at some point, I decided I needed to stop at three. Um, and so uh, it's, it, it's really the idea that you can do a little bit at a time and kind of do a little power effort and actually make a really big difference, especially if we all get in there and do it. So today, after uh, service in recognition of Earth Day, I want to encourage everybody to do a really quick power pickup. Um, outside of the church with me, we have a huge opportunity in this alleyway that, ex <laughs> <laughs> that extends between Church Street and ooh, whatever the next street beach. is over there. <laughs> what beach? Well, okay, well, beach I'm sorry. West, yeah. we'll, we'll head out this way, and I'm, as you can tell, I'm new to Oxford. Um, and we have this big opportunity, and if you would all just join me, we will have volunteers from our peacemaking committee at the doors with uh, Kroger bags, you can see Prue waving one right here, which we will use as a combination of glove and pickup receptacle. We will speed pick up, you know, three, you can let your heart guide you, however many pieces of trash, and we will do it really quickly so that we can come back and hear about Ashley's really wonderful journey. And at the very end, I hope that we will all come back and take a quick picture because the biggest and most important part of this movement is encouraging other people to do the same. I know we have a lot of wonderful, responsible people here in the congregation that throw away their trash, but we want to make sure that we encourage others to do the same. So we'll be hopefully posting a picture on social media to encourage this movement to spread throughout Oxford so that hopefully next year we won't have to do this. So thank you and have a happy Earth Day. Well, thank you, Carla. An opportunity to put our faith into action right after worship. Now it is time to worship. Let us turn our hearts and our minds to worship our Lord.
Good morning. morning. And welcome to worship at Oxford Presbyterian Church on this fourth Sunday of Easter. We are thrilled that you are here. Whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome in this place. If you're a youth or a university student, an adult or an elder, wide is God's welcome, and you are welcome here. As we come to our call to worship, I invite you to stand with one another. As we come and we share these words. Let us stand, please. And as I mentioned a moment ago, we'll take a moment to, in the midst of our call to worship, to name the local spring flowers and budding trees, as well as the local creeks, rivers, and bodies of water. We have come here seeking to worship the God of all creation. We have come to stand on holy ground. We have come to sing God's praises as plants, trees and plants, sing God's praises with their blooming. Right now blooming in my woods. Magnolias. Flattery. Narcissus. Right now blooming in my woods are the wildflowers, Virginia bluebells, bloodroot, white trout lily, celandine poppy, yellow anemone, spring beauty, and some others. Blooming all around Oxford in gardens, you would find Chinese forget-me-nots, hyacinths, daffodils, hellebores, grape hyacinths, tulips, and leucogium, and many others. I I have noticed uh, in my walking around my own garden, and also in the Houston Wood State Nature Preserve, so many other things. Uh, May apples are emerging, Dutchman's britches are in bloom, uh, toothwort is in bloom, Harbinger of Spring is already done, which is the very first one, uh, wild ginger, bellwort's in bloom, Solomon seal, and miterwort. Also, uh, spicebush, leatherwood, they're in bloom, and some of the maples uh, have already flowered, red maple, silver maple, and one of my favorite shrubs, which is a really good one, is called Canada Fly Honeysuckle. It's a good honeysuckle. It's a native. So. <laughs> we, we have come to sing praises to our Creator. We have come to experience the mighty rush of the Spirit like our surrounding flowing waters. Parker's Run. We have come to open ourselves to the Holy Spirit. We have come to experience the Lord of creation in this sacred space. Let us turn to this beautiful Easter hymn, hymn number 250, In the Bulb There Is a Flower.
Please remain standing and good morning. In worship on this Earth Sunday, we joyfully remember God created us, made this world, and called all creation very good. Let us take a moment to confess that we need forgiveness, not only for our broken relationship with the Lord, but also need forgiveness for our broken relationship with the world God created. Let us pray together. Lord of resurrection, we confess that we're Let us now take a moment for our own personal prayer and confession. Amen. Friends in faith and action, there is nowhere that we can run to escape God's love and compassion. In the generous gift of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we have been forgiven. As children of God, we are invited into the meaningful work of following faithfully after the risen Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Forgiven in Christ, please greet those around you with the peace of Christ be with you. If your neighbor is someone you have not yet met, please introduce yourself, for all are welcome in this place. See a
Very good. You're getting there. You are getting there. You really are. Okay, I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story of everyone. You may, we are all going to sit here and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. And while we're talking, we're going to hold hand. Hold my hand. Okay, got a hand. Got a hand. Got a hand. Got a finger. Okay, wait, we got to join back here with the hand. Got a hand. Got another hand. Got another hand. Got another hand. And you know, while we're talking and stuff, I'm going to give a little squeeze, and somebody's going to think to pass that squeeze along. And you know, because we're talking and stuff, sometimes, you know, I know, you've got to pass the other direction. Sometimes when we're talking and we're listening and stuff, we kind of forget something. Do you know what I read in my Bible this week? <clears throat> I'm going to borrow my hand for a moment. Or would you mind holding the microphone? That way I can hold your hand like that. Sweetness. What I read in my Bible this week was that we all have a soul, and we are all connected. We have a soul that connects every single one of you out there. And if we had all the time in the world, I'd have each of you holding each other's hand so that you could pass a squeeze. But you guys have been coming to worship with us for a long time. You pro may have even grown up in church. You may have even known people like that. So you come here to get reminded of that soul. And we do need to get reminded because what is inside of us is what helps us to be the best people we can. So, just like I started the squeeze a few minutes ago, I'm going to have you this time close your eyes and I'm going to pass you the squeeze. And you pass it to the next person who can pass it to the next. And when the last person gets the squeeze, you're going to raise your hand all the way around to Pastor Lawrence. And when he finally gets the squeeze, he's going to raise his hand. You're going to concentrate only on the squeeze. Don't forget to pass it along. Is it there yet? Very quiet. So, no, okay, okay, we'll start the squeeze again. There we are. Okay, keep going. <laughs> he got it. Yes. All right, we can take our hands down now. But think about that. When we have this soul inside of us, we have this peace inside of us that says we are all connected together. But sometimes we just have to be a little bit quiet so that we can hear it and feel it and sense it. It's that same piece of it that says if somebody's picking on somebody, that's not good, right? And it's that same sense that says if somebody is... Well, making fun of somebody else, you're not going to join in. But when we take time to just be quiet and listen to the birds, to the winds, to the sound of our feet in the grass, that's when we get reminded that we're God's very own and that we have this peace that connects us, each one of us, together. So, this is not a surprise to any of us. It is not a surprise to me. It is not a surprise to you. Is it a surprise to you, Grady? No, no. Because we talk about it all the time. But if you ever wonder why all these people come, it's because they get reminded too. Every week they get reminded. Every week, every week they come here so that they can worship God, but also so that they can be reminded to just take a second to be still and feel the squeeze. Can we get in our circle? <laughs> I know, I know. Everybody's in. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm getting in the circle too. Can I butt in? Can I butt into the circle? Thank you. Thank you. Because if you can get down on your knees, I can too. So, we know. That no matter who you are, 
And no matter what you do, and no matter where you go, we are always in the presence of love by God. That's right. And let's go. Woo! <laughs> it's all right. We are blessed. Wait, do we have a blessing from the congregation? Do you have a blessing for them? May God be with you and heal. Thank you. <laughs> Please join me in our unison prayer, prayer for illumination. Resurrecting Lord, you conquered death. Open our ears and loosen our tongues, that we too may proclaim your love, healing, and peace over the nation. Amen. We continue our April Sunday of the Epistle of 1 John with a reading from 1 John chapter 3, verse 16 through 24. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has world's goods and sees a brother and sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and with reassurance our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved in our hearts, do not condemn us. We have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask. Because we obey his commands and do, do what he pleases him. And this in his commandment, that we should believe in the name his son Jesus Christ and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey this commandments abide in him. And he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us. By the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We've studied the three themes that were introduced in chapter one. And that keep being woven back again and again into the remainder of the epistle. The first theme is koinonia, the fellowship that Christians have with the Lord and with one another. The second theme is the reality of sin, which we talked about last week. And the third theme is the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ. This theme we find at our beginning of the reading today of the atoning sacrifice of Christ takes on a whole new light and atonement is so theologically instructive for us at this point in world history that we're going to take time to study it this week and next week. So let's begin with verse 16 that Grady read a moment ago. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay our lives down for one another. The epistle writer is just getting warmed up as we read in the next verse. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? My textual study of the passages we study and worship each week will often take me back to the original Hebrew of the Hebrew scriptures and the original Greek of the New Testament. I also analyze how different translations have been rendered from that original text. And from time to time, I will go back to the King James, the New International Version, the Revised Standard Version, the Message, and so much more. And so I'd like to read this verse 17 from the King James, remembering this language is at least 400 years old. The King James renders verse 17 by saying, But whoso hath the world's good, and seeth his brother in need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? 
There is a phrase there that really struck me this week. Compassion, the bowels of compassion. This, for the King James writers, was the deepest emotion. It traces its ancient thought. The strongest feelings were produced in the abdomen, the bowels, the gut feeling. And the King James calls it the bowels of compassion. You've heard me mention the name of Father Gregory Boyle before. Boyle was sent to South Central Los Angeles in the 1980s by his Jesuit religious order. And when Boyle arrived, that parish qualified as the poorest in the city and possessed the highest concentration of gang activity. In his book, Tattoos of the Heart, Father Gregory Boyle shares some of the most poignant and transformative stories I think I may have ever read in nonfiction. One day, Boyle is talking about, he's teaching a class in a prison, a class of gang members serving time. And Boyle asked them, he said, compassion, what does it mean to you? There was silence in that class that Boyle says was quite sustained. But he let it sit in the class. And then finally, an old-timer serving a 25-year sentence tentatively raised his fingers and Boyle called on him. Well now, the fellow said, as all the eyes in the class turned to him. And shaking his head, this, this veteran of the prison said, Compassion, that's something altogether different. And the fellow pauses to ponder what he'll say next. And then he continues, looking down humbly, saying, Because compassion, that's what Jesus did. I mean, he said, compassion is God. Boyle continues to reflect on the inmate's words as he continues to write. He says, God is compassionate loving kindness. All we're asked to do is to be in the world who God is, and that is to be compassion. Certainly compassionate Compassion was the wallpaper of Jesus' soul, Boyle writes. It was the contour of his heart. It was who he was. And then Boyle writes these words. He says, we are all asking deep, real, true questions. Just assume the answer to every question is compassion. We'll hear more on atonement from Father Boyle next week. But I'm reminded on this Earth Sunday of a congregation I served about 10 years ago. A congregation that I was serving was asking the question, how can we grow as stewards of God's creation that surrounds us? In that community, acid rain decimated the beautiful forests and poisoned the waters. Trout populations crashed. DDT devastated the once thriving populations of loons and bald eagles. Our questions were deep and real and true. And we found compassion in a reality very different from our own. It came on a tour of an industrial park in Newark, New Jersey. We were touring the ironbound neighborhood of Newark, New Jersey, between the Passaic River and Lister Avenue. And there on that short swath of land between the river and the avenue is a Superfund site containing some of the world's highest concentration of dioxin, extremely toxic chemical. For over 100 years at that site at 80 Lister Avenue, there had been a manufacturing plant. And in the mid-40s, 1940s, the plant began manufacturing DDT and later an herbicide known as Agent Orange. That plant had a local reputation of being accident prone. Still they produced. And when a batch failed to meet their standards, it was dumped into the Passaic River that flows into the Newark Bay. And the Newark Bay has long been a stop for immigrants who rely on fishing its waters for their dinner. The New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection had placed warning signs as much as they could around the bay, warning against people eating the fish and the shellfish 
They put them in multiple languages. Yet many recent immigrants, as well as homeless people, ate the fish from those waters. They either did not know about the risk of dioxins or were too hungry to care. The soil that remains at 80 Lister Avenue today is far too toxic to ever move. After years of study and debate of what to do, a cement cap was poured over that land. Anna Baptista, the ironbound resident who was taking us on this tour, paused and said these words that have stuck with me. She said, the ground has been entombed. Years later, these words continue to echo in my mind. How can the ground be entombed? Living things are entombed in God's creation when their natural life comes to an end. People and panda bears, sequoia and sycamore, hermit thrushes and herons, they are entombed in the ground so that the physical elements that sustained our lives may give new life to the creation that follows us. But that's a far different story for entombing the soil of God's creation. That soil is designed for supporting life, not sleeping. That soil is designed to be the seedbed for crops and harvest, not for simply resting under a cement cap. It is crying out, and we put a cement cap on it so we can't hear its cries. And in a final bitter stroke of irony, on top of that cement cap at 80 Lister Avenue was a solitary plastic tree in a plastic pot. Reminds me of the, the trees that we might find inside in a hospital waiting room or an office building. You and I live in a beautiful pastoral place that we call Oxford, Ohio. We do not live in Newark, New Jersey. So we shouldn't have to worry about the pain in the resident of the ironbound neighborhood who fish the bay of the Newark region, should we? Our reading from 1 John responds with a resounding wrong. As followers of Christ, Christ who was the final scapegoat, we do not poison someone else's environment so that ours may be blissfully healthy. We do not sacrifice everybody else's future so that ours may be naively comfortable. Stephen Boma Prediger is a professor at Hope College in Michigan. And I attended a retreat in which he ties this passage of 1 John into the voices, into the choices that you and I make every day. Boma Prediger shared, Our work is to be patterned after Christ's reconciling reign as cosmic Lord. Therefore, because of who Christ is and what Christ done, has, has done, there is a gospel for us and the earth. He continued, because Christ is the one in whom all things hang together, we know that the world is cosmos and not chaos. Because Christ took on human flesh, we know that matter matters. Because Christ died on a cross, we eschew domination, and by contrast, we rule by serving others, including the earth. He concludes, because the resurrection is the vindication not only of Christ's work, but also of creation's goodness, we fearlessly bear witness to the way of the cross and affirm its goodness in the earthly life. Fellow pilgrims on the way of Jesus, there is no more direct way of saying this. Compassionate stewardship of the earth is integral to what it means to be Christian. Compassionate stewardship is an important part of our salvation, of our piety, of our way of authentically being a follower in the way of Christ. May it be so for us today and for the days to come. Amen.
and please be seated as it's a joy to welcome several new members to Oxford Presbyterian Church to the baptismal font. Robert will be using microphone four up here. It is a joy, a joy to invite these beautiful people, beautiful pilgrims in faith, to this font where we begin our journey. And the promises made at the baptismal font are reaffirmed in this moment. So it is a joy to welcome Jan and Jean Krebs, Jenny Scott, Tony Noble, and Nancy and Tom Wilson. Also joining in membership, meeting with the session earlier this week was Abby Van Gorder. Abby is unable to be with us this week because of a leadership retreat this weekend, but it was a joy to welcome Abby as well. We begin with these words from St. Paul in the book to Ephesians. Paul writes, you are no longer strangers or sojourners, but are equally citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Build upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus alone being that cornerstone in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in Christ and in whom you are built into it for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. So friends, I have several questions for you this morning that are profession of faith. First, trusting in the gracious mercy of God. Do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? Do you? And will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Will you? Amen. We welcome you with joy in the common life of this church. We promise you our friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior. Amen and amen. Friends, I'll just ask us to join in hands together here as we come to this prayer of grateful thanksgiving. Let us pray. Thank you, Judy. Oh God, we praise you for calling us to faith and for gathering us into the church, this local body of Christ. We thank you for your people gathered here in this family of faith and rejoice that you have increased our community of faith. Together, may we live in the spirit, building one another up in love sharing in the life and worship of the church, and sharing the world for the sake of Jesus Christ in his ministry. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. What grace this is, Jan and Jean and Jenny and Tony and Nancy and Tom, to join with you in the fellowship of this church through Jesus Christ our Lord. Welcome and thank you. And we have a small token of welcome for you as well, Jenny and Tony, and Jean and Jan, and Tom and Nancy. Thank you all. Let us together give a round of appreciation for these pilgrims joining us on this journey of faith. Thank you all. We can return to our seats. Oh, thank you, Judy. This is a joy as we come to the prayers of the people today. There are many, many joys, including the vitality and viability of our congregation. We also have many prayers. You can go ahead and be seated. Thank you. We have many prayers of concern to lift up today. And Amy, here's the microphone. Number three. Um, as we come to the prayers of the people, we will take a moment for those prayers that you have carried because we share the prayers together. So there will be a time for you to share your joys and then your concerns. And just raise your hand at that time if you have a, a prayer to share and Amy will bring the microphone to anyone in the floor of the congregation. Let us join our hearts in prayer now. 
Hear our prayers, O Lord, that rise up from and for your whole creation today. Lord, from this very place within Oxford, Ohio, to the farthest reaches of the universe, Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray for rivers free to flow, rivers of grace that offer and receive forgiveness and welcome, rivers of fresh and refreshing waters that quench the thirst of dry throats and arid hopes. Lord, we pray for our farms and our wilderness to stand free, places on this earth, Lord, that fill our tables with food and restore awe and wonder to our souls, places in our spirits where your spirit leads us into those moments of a burning bush, a Damascus road, where we are changed because we have met you. Lord, we pray for our forests and trees, for roots that go deep into the soil that nourishes, and leaves that breathe and give us back oxygen into the air for the sake of our very breath. Lord, we lift up these prayers to you as we share ourselves as you so freely shared life with us. So Lord, we, hear up, we lift up prayers of joy that rise up from us throughout all of creation. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayers. Lord, we also lift up a prayer of joy for those joining the ministry of Oxford Presbyterian Church today. And for all, through prayer and through action, Lord, through being parts of choirs and committees and teams and mission groups and pilgrimages, Lord, how we are being transformed on the spiritual journey inward and the missional journey outward. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayers. Friends, if you have other prayers of joy to share today, I invite you to raise your hand. Thank you. Debbie, and then Dick. Debbie? I hope I get this correct, but one of our own members was uh, awarded the Effective Educator Award at Miami University, and I just, that gave me joy when I heard that. Absolutely. That's right. De Debbie, I'll go ahead and say the name, but for, for the award in education received by John Baylor, a recognition of, of many years of teaching and <laughs> and another one of the cloud of witnesses from this congregation of teachers and educators that transform lives. Lord, in your grace, Hear our prayers. Other joys to share. Dick, and then... I, I have many, but uh, uh, Debbie just stole one of them. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take more. It's a joy to see Jan Reinhardt back it with is. us today. Yeah. It is. It's a, thank you, Dick. It, Jan, it's a joy to worship with you again today. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayers. Pam. Joy, celebration in the life of our former First Lady Barbara Bush. Yes. Uh, joy and celebration and honor of the life of our former First Lady Barbara Bush. And Pam, if I can add a prayer for joy for a grandchild welcomed into your family just a few weeks ago. Just a few weeks ago. That's right. Lord, in your grace, hear our prayers. Other joys to share today. We continue in prayer, Lord, and we ask you to be with us as we share those concerns that are upon our hearts. And we pray for the times in which faith is resilient, overcoming those concerns that may just veer into the territory of fear and anxiety. Lord, this morning we rise and we pray for the residents of Kabul, Afghanistan, seeking peace and security, joy and life in the midst of violence around that city and around that country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Friends, other prayers of concern that you may have today, just raise your hand and share them. Yes, Rosemary. The microphone is just coming around the corner to you. There you are. For my cousin Sonia, who has bone cancer, please pray for her that it goes into remission. Thank you, Rosemary. Praise, prayers for your cousin Sonia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our yeah. prayers. I think I not saw another hand. M Margaret and uh. then Connie. Prayers for my brother, David Wells, who's been in the hospital at UVA and uh, 
Charlottesville, Virginia, since Wednesday, and he needs prayers for healing. Thank you, Margaret. Prayers for your brother, David. Lord, in your mercy, hear our yeah. prayers. Kathy? Yeah. <clears throat> prayers for my little sister, little because she's short, and, but uh, <laughs> she is my little sister. Uh, she had a hysterectomy on Friday, and she's fought MS for mm. a long time, mm. and this is the first big thing that's ever happened to yeah. her. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I just wor I'm just worrying because she's there. And yep, yep. And her first name? Roz. Roz. Prayers for Roz. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I saw Connie's hand as well. Connie, any others from the choir? Yes, Vic. Uh, I'd like to ask continued healing prayers for Denny Wilson. Since yes. Died. Yes. So he has some good news, I think. Yes, it is. It's delightful good news. Dave, it's wonderful to be in worship with you this morning and without an eye patch. Dave had an eye procedure. And um, for all of those um, friends of the congregation and family members who are living with cancer, Lord, we pray for Dave and so many others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Connie. That my daughter Anne in Kenya would find a good job. Prayers for your daughter Anne in Kenya. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We continue to pray for members of this congregation seeking healing and wholeness, including Judy and Betty and John and Tracy and Bob and Nancy and Joanne and Stacy and Jean and many, many others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious and forgiving God, we in this moment commit ourselves to your mission including stewardship of the creation in which we live and all who belong to it. We will care for this world with gentleness and compassion. We will see the water, air, and land as a gift for which we are truly thankful and undertake the duty and privilege of respecting and caring for it. We pray for it in Jesus' name as he taught his disciples as they walked across this good land, praying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Embraced by the family of God and enfolded within God's good creation, let us respond generously and in gratitude with our time, talent, and treasures, our finances, to our church's ministry. May what we offer be shared with the whole family of God.
Thank you for your generosity to our congregation's ministry and mission. Each one of your gifts brings an impact upon this community, our nation, and our world. Let us join our hearts in prayer as we dedicate our lives and our offering today. Blessed and blessing God, we bring you gifts from our hearts and lives. Many, may our gifts be used to bring forth the renewal of your abundant life in us and the restoration of your creation. Throughout the world, we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Brady. Now, as we prepare to go out into this day and into this week, I'd like to invite Bill Fisher, a representative from our peacemaking committee, and Bill, I have a microphone for us here, as well as the other participants on the Mosaic of Peace to join me around the baptismal font. Please join me. We will be group of five, myself, Angela Trubacek, Greg Hughes, Amir Zahor, and Janet Ziegler will be traveling to um, Jerusalem, Bethlehem, and Nazareth over the coming two weeks. Um, several of us, um, a couple of us leave next Saturday, and a couple more of us leave next Sunday. So we wanted to have the commissioning with the whole group today in worship. And um, Bill, thank you as a member of the Peacemaking Committee for being a part of that. Janet, Janet, Amir, Angela, Greg, Lawrence. In a week, you will arrive in Jerusalem, where you will join others of the Presbyterian Church in witnessing for peace and justice in the land called Holy. In this moment, the congregation seeks to commission you to go out as witnesses and to seek to serve the Holy One in that place. I invite you to now commit yourselves to this mission. Will you accept the responsibilities of this call to the land called holy? Will you promote the love of God and neighbor? Will you serve the needs of the people there while at the same time letting the spirit of God that is already at work there speak to you and serve you? Will you? I will. Will you serve as peacemaking ambassadors of your congregation the Presbyterian Church USA, and Christ's Church Universal. Will you share your experiences with others upon your return? Will you? I will. Will the congregation please join me in the commissioning prayer? Lord of abundant life, if only there were a guarantee, if only there were reasonable explanations, if only there were reliable statistics, Perhaps we could trust your resurrection power. God of grace and Lord of love, we are tired of the violence. We are weary of wars, the pain we cause, the power we misuse, the divisions we feel, the despair we tolerate. We want to risk resurrection. We want to come out of the prison of our limited knowledge. We want to emerge from the tombs that hold us back from new life. Make us an Easter people, we pray. We seek the courage to be people of your peace. We seek the hope that will sustain us in the desert times until the tree of life blossoms and bears its fruit of justice and joy. Amen and amen. Thank you, Bill. And thank you. And we have here on the communion table just a sampling of the cranes of peace that members of our congregation have made and folded and given along with the story of the cranes of peace um, after World War II. And we will be taking these to the children in refugee camps um, in Israel and Palestine and sharing them with the teachers so the teachers can give those to the children and be a symbol of the peace that we seek to be able to witness to in that land. So we invite you to pray for us as we journey and follow the blog that will be published in the, the link will be published in the voice over the next couple of weeks. But please join us in prayer um, as we travel. Now let us stand and join with one another for our final hymn, hymn 691, Lord, when I came into this life. in Jerusalem.
eyes set on the Lord, we prepare to go out for this week. And as we go out, all are welcome to join us in our Take Three initiative to pick up what we see around us um, and bring that back and be able to make a difference today for our community and our creation. And all are welcome in the lounge for a time of fellowship and to hear more about Ashley's story on the Camino. And now we come to the blessing in which Grady will lead. In the name of Jesus, who is from a place called Nazareth, we faithfully recommit ourselves to this sacred place. Go forth to connect more deeply and, more, and follow more faithfully in this global work to which God has called us. Alleluia. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen.